The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Before we can jump in and start making stuff with the Arduino, there are a few things we need to do to set it up. The first thing is to install and configure the Arduino IDE on your computer. The IDE is where you'll write and upload all of your sketches, so it's important to get familiar with it. The Arduino IDE is a free download from the arduino.cc website. There's a web-based version if you want to try that but I like installing it locally on my computer instead. We have a couple options here. If you're using a Windows system, you can download the Windows Installer Package, which will install the IDE on your computer just like any other program. But this way only works if you have permission to install programs on your computer. If you're using a computer at school or a computer that you don't have administrator access to, you can download the Windows zip file for non-admin install. This will keep the program files in a folder without actually installing it. Then you can run the IDE by opening the executable file. You can also use the Windows Store app, which works just like the other two versions. For Mac users, you'll want to download and install this file. And for Linux users, download the file for 32-bit, 64-bit, or ARM systems, depending on which one you have. Okay, let's have a look around the IDE now. The first thing to do after you've installed the IDE is to set the board type to the model of Arduino you'll be using. There are lots of different types of Arduinos, and they don't all use the ATmega328 microcontroller. Sketches need to be compiled differently depending on the microcontroller. Setting the board type tells the IDE what microcontroller your Arduino has, so we can compile the sketch accordingly. To set your board type, go to Tools, then Board, and choose the model of Arduino you're using. I'm using the Arduino Uno, so I'll pick Arduino slash Genuino Uno. Now we need to tell the IDE which USB port you want to use to communicate with the Arduino. The Arduino needs to be connected to your computer before you set the port. Now go to Tools, then Port, and select the COM port with the name of the board you're using. Okay, that's all the setup we need to do with the IDE. One other thing I'd like to show you are the example sketches that come with the IDE. If you go to File, then Examples, you'll find a bunch of pre-written sketches for doing stuff like blinking LEDs, controlling servos, and writing to LCD displays. Every Arduino sketch needs two things to work properly, a setup function and a loop function. The setup function is executed only once when the program starts. It always goes before the loop function, so let's write that part first. To create the setup function, type void setup, 
then an open parenthesis and close parenthesis, followed by an open curly brace and close curly brace. The setup function is where you put code that doesn't change throughout the program. In later videos, you'll see that this is where we put the code for setting pins as inputs and outputs, initializing the serial monitor, and initializing sensors. But for now, all you need to know is that the code goes between these two curly braces. The other essential part of every sketch is the loop function. Creating the loop function is similar to creating the setup function. Write void loop, followed by open and close parentheses, then open and close curly braces. The code you want to run in the loop function goes between the two curly braces. The loop function is the main part of the sketch, where most of the important parts of your sketch will go. The loop function is exactly what it sounds like. The code inside here gets executed over and over again in a loop. Like most programming languages, code on the Arduino runs, or executes, from the top of the sketch to the bottom, line by line. So the Arduino will start at the top of the sketch and execute the code in the setup function. Then it'll jump down to the loop function and run this code over and over again until you turn off the power or give it a command to exit the loop. Most programming languages, including the Arduino language, let you write comments. Comments are basically just notes you can write inside your program. They help you remember what each part of your code does, especially if you haven't seen it in a while. They also make it easier for other people to read and understand your code. Comments aren't executed by the Arduino, so you can write whatever you want. There are two ways to make a comment. The first way is to type two forward slashes before the text you want to be a comment. Any text on this line after the two forward slashes is ignored by the Arduino. The IDE recognizes that this is a comment and grays out the text. You can also make a multi-line comment by typing a forward slash and an asterisk followed by an asterisk and a forward slash. Any text between the two asterisks will be recognized by the IDE as a comment. Multi-line comments are usually used at the beginning of sketches to explain things like how the sketch works and how to connect any external components or sensors. After you finish writing a sketch, the next step is to upload it to the Arduino. To upload your sketch, click up here on this arrow button. The IDE will first verify your code by checking for any typos or syntax errors. If it finds an error, it will let you know with an orange error message like this. This error was probably because I have this text up here. Let's try that again. If your code is free of errors, the IDE will compile the sketch. Compiling is the process of converting human-readable code like C and C++ into machine-readable code that the microcontroller can understand. After the sketch has been compiled, the IDE transfers the compiled sketch through the USB port to the Arduino, where it's saved in the ATmega 328's flash memory. Once the sketch is uploaded, it starts running right away, and keeps running until you remove the power. If you do remove the power, the Arduino will shut off, but the sketch will be saved in the Arduino's flash memory. So the next time you plug the Arduino back into a power source, the same sketch will start running again. In the next video, we're going to build our first project and learn how to control LEDs with the Arduino. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.